Special meeting for the public hearing for today, February 27, 2018. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Trustee Here. Trustee Grant. Here. Trustee Jones. Trustee Tates. Yes. Trustee Todd. Here. Trustee Zupan. Present. Let the record show that Trustee Jones did call. He said he wouldn't be able to make it. Um, this hearing is for the National Pollutant Discharge Dep Elimination System. Um, and then our own engineer, um, Jim Zarnick, is going to explain uh, explain this to us. This is something that we do every year, so um, this will be a, for, the, for the first time. Um, trustees that didn't haven't done this before, you can kind of see what we have. This is one of the public hearings that we have every year for different aspects of the village. So I will turn this over to our village engineer, Mr. Jim Zarnick. Thank you, Mayor. So this is required by the Illinois Environmental Protect Protection Agency in accord with the village's notice of intent for the Illinois General Permit, ILR 40, and the permit is performed on a five-year cycle. The next NOI is due by October 1st of 2020 for the new permit cycle beginning in 2021. So first of all, um, this is the NPDES program, which is the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. And it's a permit for an MS4, which is a municipal separate storm sewer system uh, community, which Sot Village is. The goal is to eliminate pollutants from entering the storm sewer and detention ponds and depositing into rivers, lakes, creeks, which are the ultimate outlet. Points. For Sauk Village, these would be the Lansing Drainage Ditch and Deer Creek. There are six minimum control measures, or MCMs. The first is public education and outreach. So what the village has done this past year to inform the public is, first of all, the annual report has been posted to the village's website. And secondly, a pollution prevention flyer was also posted to the village's website. Uh, a reminder, do not dump oil, paint, or other chemicals down the sewer. Our water bodies do not like that. Also, please clean up after your dogs in your yard and parks. Uh, secondly, uh, the second MCM is public involvement and participation. So this public hearing is an example of that. The village welcomes public involvement. Call Public Works if you notice any spills in the village's streams. Sauk Village hosted a community cleanup day on April 22nd, 2017 to clean up around the village buildings and public right-of-ways. The third measure is illicit discharge detection and elimination. The village has an ordinance that it uses to address illegal discharges to village waterways. Public Works has identified all outfalls within the village. Village maintains an up-to-date sewer atlas that indicates all the outfalls. And finally, the village's goal is to inspect 20% of the outfalls on an annual basis. Fourth minimum control measure is control of construction site stormwater runoff. The village has an erosion control ordinance in place to address construction site stormwater runoff. Developers are required to provide a stormwater pollution prevention plan which addresses how to prevent erosion at construction sites. Developers are required to inspect their sites weekly during construction and after rain events. The, the fifth measure is post-construction stormwater management. The village has a post-construction ordinance in place to address long-term control of stormwater pollution from newly developed sites. Final inspections are required before the developer can leave the site. Detention is required for all developments in the village. Detention ponds and other post-construction measures filter out sediments prior to the sediments being released to the environment. And the final MCM is pollution prevention and good housekeeping. The village conducts street sweeping, branch pickup, and leaf collection periodically throughout the year. Village's goal is to clean 20% of the village's catch basins per year to prevent the collected material from reaching the village's waterways. The village requests the public's health, help, 
in inspecting inlets and catch basins and keeping them clear of debris. Robinson Engineering or Village staff will develop a municipal operations program and stormwater management program for stormwater best management practices. So our annual activities moving forward. First, an annual report is made to the IEPA each year by June 1st. Ordinances and the Storm Sewer Atlas are reviewed yearly. Public Works will conduct in-house training for good housekeeping practices. Public Works will mow and remove litter from detention ponds. Public Works is participating in a watershed group organized to implement control measures that will reduce chloride contamination in the watershed's receiving streams. And finally, Robinson Engineering will ensure that developments comply with stormwater <coughs> ordinances and floodplain regulations. So now, Mayor, if you would like to open it up for questions to the board or the public, I would appreciate that. Okay, at this time, um, I'll open it up to the uh, board. If the board has any questions in regards to uh, the presentation. I got a question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you I'm sorry. Question, Mr. Mayor. I just want to know what have, what kind of problems have we had in the last, we'll say, two or three years? You know, have we had any, uh, you know, uh, places where we had to bag up the sewer or something like that? You know, where it's just covered stuff. We had. Do you have anything noted through the, through the building? In terms of just flooding? Yeah, for flooding. Yeah, flooding really isn't covered within this program. It's more pollution of the waterways. Okay, so we haven't had a real big pollution problem. Yeah. No, to my knowledge, there have been none. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll open it up to the um, public. Do there have any, anyone in the audience has any questions to ask our engineer in regards to this particular agenda? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It was moved by Trustee Zupan, second by Trustee Zahab Todd. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Brewer? Yes. Grant? Yes. Jones? Yes. 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 Motion is carried. We will have our board meeting in approximately eight minutes. Thank you. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, clerk would you please call the roll. Trustee Brewer. Here. Trustee Grant. Here. Trustee Jones. Okay. Um, item number four, approval of minutes. I'll accept the motion to approve the regular board meeting minutes for November 28, 2017. So moved. Second. It was moved by Trustee Todd, second by Trustee Brewer. Any questions? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Brewer? No. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Jones? Trustee Taylor? Yes. Trustee Todd? Yes. Trustee Zupan? No. Extension goes with um, the affirmative. I have number five, public comment. All questions and comments must be directed to the mayor. Each speaker may comment on any matter pertaining to the business of Salt Village. Each speaker is allowed one opportunity to speak for up to three minutes and may not engage in debate. State your name, please. Captain Petra, I missed a question last week about the solar farms. It didn't seem like the residents that that 
Now, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you say the question about what farm? The solar farm. Oh, solar, okay. Um, they seem like they weren't interested in the group. And I know that there's going to be a letter sent to them that it has it already. Now, if they don't want it and they vote against it, does it not go through? Well, first of all, we haven't gotten that, gathered all the best information that we need to. As you know, it's not on the agenda. So we still have, we're in the planning stage of gathering more information from that contractor. So right now, um, it's something that will be taken under advisement when it gets to that point, when it gets to the voting point. So um, it's not a matter of the resident voting on it. It's a matter of, first of all, the due diligence that that particular contractor has to present to the village before we even get to that point. Because there's the other steps before it gets voted on. And my other question on that is, why or did they come before the board before they contracted for a lease with a private person? Why wouldn't they come to us and let us lease property that we own as a village to them? You know? I'm not, you said why, that property is privately owned. Correct. Okay. So instead of going to a private person, shouldn't they come before the board and see if you have property for these leads first? That's their prerogative to do that now. I mean, it's a private upon private matter. If that person wanted to lease that not knowing what the board or what the village is going to do, that's that's there on them. And if I can't tell a person not to lease something because I'm now I'm anticipating whether or not the board will or will not accept it. So my thing is we should be the ones renting or leasing property that we own so that we get the I understand what you're saying. It's what I'm saying. You know, but they, they chose that spot. This is like having a house built on the lot. I mean, you can buy the land, but you have to do everything it takes in order to make that happen. So you would think that you would go to where you're going to actually erect that and find out what they have and then go from there, but. Okay. The other thing is about the phone systems. I, I noticed that last week they said we needed four different companies to make these phone systems work properly. How many first, for, uh, companies? How many companies do we have to have, like Comcast and now? Okay. How many do we use? Okay. First of all, let me, let me iterate. I'm, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I should have said it maybe clearly or whatever. But what we're doing now is, is engaging. So from now on, what I'll do is ask to get all the questions that you have Right now, so I can jot them down and answer them. But keep going back and forth like this is not it's not what we're supposed to do. But however, I will answer that question. And it's not for it's, it's companies that present they're presenting and they presented to the village what they could do. It's not that we need four phone companies to do one job. It's the three companies came or three companies submitted their bids, and then it's up to the board to make a decision on which one they. No, I, I understood that they said we needed Comcast and. Um, who we have now, I don't know the names of the companies, but they said that we need four different companies. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that my? bluegrass was open and before we could do anything we had to put the tables back we had to sweep the floors and wash all the tables when we finished we had to do the same thing now this is getting a little tiresome going in there and having to clean after and before we go in there to do our stuff and we have to clean up after other people I guess there's a baby shower or something there's cake crumbs and food all over the floors. The tables were in a shambles. Nothing was put back the way it should have been. It, we were tired before we could even start. We would like uh, some phone numbers to call people to come up and check it out before we get there. And we're put down to two 
two nights a month, two Sundays a month, second and fourth, because it's in the bylaws or whatever that any organization or anything can only be in there twice a month, why is the Rannix in there four times a month? And my other, one other thing is, has anybody found out anything about the bricks? Now this has gone on long enough. Thank you. Okay, um, in regard to the condition of how the senior center was left, I will talk to the chairman of the senior committee and find out from him and see if, if, if there's any measures put into place after it's been rented or used that someone comes and uh, inspects it for the next usage. And um, as far as the bricks are concerned, I saw a memo. Um, I'm sure it was passed on, but I will definitely look into that tomorrow to find out because I did see where bricks were ordered or paid for and um, I don't know what's holding it up. I was just informed that those bricks that were ordered and um, due to be placed, it would be placed in the spring. So I don't know right now, I guess maybe it could be a reason why, but they will be placed in the spring, but I will follow up tomorrow anyway to make sure that's correct. Yes, ma'am. Heidi Parker. Uh, my question concerns new business tonight, and I uh, wanted an explanation of the uh, what's VOIP, which I think believe stands for Village Owned Land in numbers. Um, I was trying to look back on all the agendas to see if maybe they, it had been discussed before. However, there's nothing on the website since December 12th meeting. Nothing. So my question tonight is, why would, what is this? Can you explain? I'm sorry, what is my question is, what is VOIP? Why do we need it? Why do we want to pay about $6,000 a month for this? And the, uh, there's a host of first communications, STC technologies, and Nextiva. Uh, my question also is, how many village-owned properties are there to justify $6,000 a month in expenses to do whatever it is? So I wondered if you could explain that, please. Okay, um, is that all? That's okay, that's, I guess you're talking about item 11B, which is village-owned land. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that was brought before the board last week. It was just voting on to go ahead with um, a request to have this land looked at, and that land is the land that the property is on the end of Serber Plaza, um, right next to, I think it's a church right there, but it used to be a cleaners and a, and a laundromat. And we're, we're, we're looking to, um, the board is, we're asking the board to request to go further with that. And as far as D, E, and F, it's a motion, V-O-I-P, it's a motion to, we, we had a, um, last week, a vendor come in and explain to the board the three different items or three different vendors that wanted to do business with the village on our phone system. So we put the lowest one first to be voted on. If that's voted on, affirmatively, then we don't have to do the next two. But if it's not, then we'll vote the next one. And if that's not voted on, then we'll do the third one. If none of them are done, at least we, we brought it before the board to be voted on for a, new, a different phone service to save us approximately $30,000 a year, the next three years, in, I mean, cost for our phone system. Man. So it's not $6,000 a month for the phone system. These, each one of these are individual contracts. May I ask what that has to do with village-owned land? Pendants? It has nothing to do, there's separate requests, ma'am. I'm sorry? That has nothing to do with, B has nothing to do with C, D, and E. Why is the same uh, abbreviation used? Pardon me? 
A B O I P. Does that stand for village owned land? No, ma'am. No. What does it stand for? Voice over the internet. Okay, I wasn't here last week, so okay. and I couldn't look back at the agendas or the, okay. the minutes. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. We're going to um, next one is the mayor's report. I have very little. I just wanted to put out there that I'm looking for volunteers to be on the uh, zoning board and uh, also um, will it be explained at, uh, soon the particulars but we're going to have a cleanup date in the village, in the, at the village April 28th. I'm looking for volunteers, I'm reaching out for people that would like to come out and um, help us clean the, the village period in different areas that we um, need cleaning after this storm and really after the winter. So that date, if you can mark it on your calendar, April 28th at 8 o'clock in the morning here at the village, and it'll probably, it'll probably emanate over at the uh, senior center, and all you need to bring is dress for the weather. We'll, we'll provide everything else, so just basically dress for the weather and some, something that you'd rather be outside in. So those are the two things that I have. That being said, I will go to the village clerk, Ms. Marva Campbell Pruitt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to follow up on something we talked about a couple of months ago, which is Student Governance Day. We have a date for um, that activity for Village Hall, and that will be April the 24th. Here at the village, we will be at the school district the week prior to that on that Monday. <clears throat> and then it's anticipated that that Friday we will host a luncheon for all of the students that takes part in either one. The school district will be providing transportation in all instances. So that piece I know was a concern of ours, but that has been taken care of. Another thing I would like to report on are the vehicle <coughs> stickers. We're in the midst of a art contest uh, with the students at three of our schools, and the deadline for turning that in, their submissions will be March the 7th, and shortly after that, we will be judging. Anyone interested in helping to judge, you're more than welcome. Uh, if you would like to be one of the people that choose our next vehicle stickers. In terms of the bricks, the bricks have been placed, the order has been placed, and as the mayor reported, it has, they will be placed in the spring. Right now with this weather, there's absolutely no way that uh, our crew can put that, put the bricks out right now. And um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Village engineer, Mr. Jim Zarnick. Thank you, Mayor. Wow, like I haven't done this before or something. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. We have started design on the replacement of a riser pipe within the west elevated tank. The riser pipe has corroded over time and has developed numerous leaks. Public Works has been able to stop these leaks with pipe repair clamps, but the pipe is beyond its service life. In order to keep this tank in operation, the riser pipe needs to be replaced. We will prepare a design to renew this component of the elevated tank and serve the village dependably for de decades to come. We will prepare contract documents for the project to be bid in the coming months. The elevated tank will need to be taken out of service for a brief time while the riser pipe is being replaced, but we will minimize the time that the contractor is allowed for this operation. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Report for the department. Department heads, finance and administration, Mr. Mohan Rao. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Fire Department Chief Al Starfray. Thank you, Mayor and Board. I'm going to pray from February the 10th through February the 23rd. Fire Department responded to 27 calls, five fire alarms, 
two vehicle accidents, six mutual aids out of town, three ambulance PD assists, one stove fire, two vehicle fires, a gas leak, a pole on fire, and four citizens assist storm that we just uh, had over here this past week or so. And just for everybody's information, we have some more rain coming in tonight and tomorrow. And according to uh, the weather map, excuse me, everybody's got a different opinion on how much we're going to get. So that is my report, Mayor. Thank you. Police report, Chief Robert Kowalski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and trustees. For the past two weeks, we had 460 calls for service and 10 arrests. Few cases of interest on February 14th while on patrol. Officer Gary Luke was uh, attentive and monitoring the Illinois State Police Emergency Road Network and heard a broadcast by the Chicago Heights Police Department of a stolen vehicle. Several days later, while his with his attentiveness to the dispatch, Officer Luke spotted the vehicle and verified it was in fact a stolen vehicle that was dispatched earlier. Several subjects were arrested and one of the occupants was found to be a missing person from Lansing. On February 16th, officers responded to two separate calls of stabbing victims. One victim of the stabbing was taken to St. Margaret's Hospital by his girlfriend. When officers were called to the hospital, both the victim and the girlfriend had conflicting stories of where the stabbing took place. Girlfriend said it occurred on Peach Street. The victim said it, it occurred on Candlelight Co Court. Both remained uncooperative, and when the victim was stable, he was transported to Stroger Hospital. The second incident occurred on the 21600 block of Gaylene at a party. One victim was stabbed and had his ear partially bit off, another victim being a pregnant female who was battered. The offender was located a block away and arrested. Cook County State's Attorney's Office was called to review upgrading the charges to felonies due to the severity of the inflicted wounds, but felony charges were denied. The offender was still charged with several counts of misdemeanor battery. Finally, on February 19th, officers were contacted and requested to check on the well-being of a 15-year-old on the 2900 block of 224th Street. Officers were unable to gain entry and had to gain permission to forcibly enter the residence. The 15-year-old was found inside breathing but unresponsive. Subject was transported to St. Margaret's Hospital for treatment. Uh, again, a reminder, National Night Out. We previously registered with National Association of Town Watch for the 2018 National Night Out, set for August 7th. Many of you have already approached me, and I appreciate it. If you'd still like to volunteer or have any suggestions, please feel free to email gmail.com. You can also message me on Facebook or call me direct at my number, 708-753-515. Uh, Again, and I'll keep reminding everyone, prescription drug drop-off uh, is on April 28th between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. in the lobby of Sauk Village Police Department. We're asking that anyone who would like to dispose of their unwanted prescription drugs feel free to use this opportunity to do so. And finally, uh, Windpack Grand Opening on February 21st, I, along with other uh, officials, were invited to the ribbon cutting ceremony for the new expansion of Woodpack Corporation. It was truly an honor and a pleasure to be among the dignitaries that attended this event. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mayor, and the board for the invitation. And on a personal note to the residents of Sauk Village, this event truly showed promise for the future of Sauk Village. Thank you. Thank you. Community Development, Director Sherry Jasinski. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's four new modular home permits that have been issued in Weatherstone. Two um, of the homes have been completed, and the remaining two are in the process of being built. I sent out letters to all the businesses in regards to keeping their property and dumpster areas clean from litter and debris. I also sent them a copy of the temporary sign permit ordinance, letting them know they have to obtain permits for the temporary signs that they're placing in the parkways and it can only be done twice a year for 30 days maximum. And they have to remain in good condition or they're gonna get tickets. Uh, went over the, the phone place, they have a couple of those flat banners that are falling apart and they need to remove them. And then on February uh, 23rd, I sent an email out to the Board of Trustees in reference to the community solar garden. 
I explained that this type of business isn't allowed in any zoning district, and I needed to know if the board <coughs> wants to move forward uh, with the zoning. The only trustees that responded were Trustee Todd and Brewer, and they're not in favor of it. So that conclu conclu yeah, concludes my report. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Economic development, um, directed uh, Mr. Joseph Wizzlewatt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we didn't have a prepared report for this evening. Um, however, I just wanted to inform the board that we did uh, complete the interview process uh, with the consultants for the comprehensive plan. Um, both of the consultants that were interviewed did a fantastic job. Um, it was a very tough decision. Um, the mayor went over the uh, presentations and we uh, recommended our recommendation to the CMAP board. Um, and I'm waiting for them to officially inform both of the candidates um, that did the presentations before we can publicly release that information. However, I'd be happy to share that uh, with the individual board members uh, off record. Uh, but uh, it was a tough decision. Um, the comprehensive plan will begin um, sometime next month. We will have a, um, a kickoff meeting um, with the public invited as well. So looking forward to getting that underway. Um, as a final note here, um, with the uh, WinPAC grand opening, um, I know some of the trustees were not uh, able to attend. Um, uh, the general manager there has invited uh, you over there, if you haven't been over there, just to kind of take a tour of the facility. So if uh, any of you would like to do that, uh, please let me know and I'll make sure we can arrange that. Um, they have invested uh, several million dollars in the equipment that they have there. One of their production lines um, kind of goes from beginning to end and one of those production lines is, is about $10 million. So they have seven of them over there. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, impressive uh, facility. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Yes. Okay. This is the report from the Public um, Works um, Department the head, head, Kevin Weller. Um, item number one, the next upgrade will, will be um, to 2116 to 2100, 223rd place, 26 feet of water main, four new service connections, and a new hydrant, all affected. Residents will be notified of the board order when the job starts and when it's lifted. Item number two, the staff has responded to a rainfall of 3.5 inches and an instant snow melt of two feet. Residents are reminded to move vehicles from the street after two inches of snow and do not throw debris in the streets. This contributes to a quick flooding of the roadway. Item number three, the staff has made repairs to trucks and equipment. Truck number two, front plow attachment needed welding repairs. Leaks in the fuel tank, repairs pending and, pending and time parts are in. Key switch, truck number one, fuel tank and straps and parts needed to be ordered. Lift cylinder leaking. And then truck number five, hydraulic problems in the plow repaired, bad fitting debris, and lines needs flushing. Truck number 78, the plow lights, electric issue, electric issue, work pending. Item number four, staff is working on the north side, shut off list. Number five, staff is working on the B-box digs, jets, and leaks. This is ongoing. Item number six, staff will be out with the pothole patching when the conditions and the time is allowed. Item number seven, receive second order for the 100 ton of salt. And item number eight, working with the village engineers on the final draft to start work on the ball field of the works would do some demo to save money, the rest will be completed by the contractors. And finally, item number nine, several repairs in progress at both well houses. That is the report from Mr. Kevin Welch. 
reports of committees and commissions, beautification <coughs> committee, chairman, trustee Linda Todd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, no report. Our senior advisory council, chairman, Mr. Emmett Farmer, just want to give him a mic, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Trustee. Uh, only thing we got, uh, we're uh, working on our calendar for March and to be ready uh, by the weekend. And that's all we have to do. Okay, I do have a question that was raised a few minutes ago. I was looking to see if we were here. When you rent out the um, senior center, um, is there someone that's there after it's over with to kind of look and see the condition that is left there? Is there anyone that comes up? Because I, I don't know if you take, I know in the community center they do, but the senior center, I don't know if you take a deposit or whatever, but is there anyone that comes to make sure that it was taken care of before they get the deposit back? Yeah, uh, we do take a deposit. Uh, we haven't really assigned anybody to, to, to check and I'm sure at uh, our next meeting, I did hear that pretty much okay. the end of that. Okay. So by next meeting, we need to, you know, I need to assign someone, uh, check after, because you know, we did, you know, we didn't have anyone check out. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Reports of trustees and standing committees, public service committee, trustee Bernice Brewer. No report, Mr. Mayor. Re uh, Budget and Finance Trustee Roger Grant. Uh, number four, Mr. Mayor. Other work parts is not here. Housing and Governmental Relations, Trustee Cecil Taylor. Ordinance Review Committee, Trustee Linda Todd. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ordinance Review Committee will have their next meeting on March 8th, 6.30, here at the Village Hall here in the Rotunda. And that ends my report. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Trustee Beth Zupan. Our next committee meeting will be next Wednesday, not tomorrow, but next Wednesday, March 7th, 6 p.m. here at Village Hall. And I'm just gonna add that I appreciated the additional uh, presence last month, or earlier this month, I should say. We did have a few new faces. I hope you're coming back next week, because I liked having you there, and, and I'm hoping you will continue to, to participate. Uh, I also want to piggyback on the, what the police chief was saying regarding National Night Out in August. It isn't just about the police department, it's about the village wide and all of our first responders, you know, emergency management agency, the fire department as well. Uh, so it's really a broader um, event than just that, and we've started talking about it in our meetings uh, and we'll continue to do so as we plan activities uh, special um, things to come so if you're interested in helping with that you know like the police chief said you can reach out to him but you can also reach out to me or come to a meeting next Wednesday night because we, like I said we will be talking about it then as well that concludes my report thank you um, the next thing motion to um, for new business the accounts payable that was on the agenda was a typo so I will need a motion to suspend the rules to accept the uh, agenda, I'm sorry, accept the accounts payable for the 27th. It was on the 20th, that was, that was a typo, so I do need a uh, motion to uh, suspend the rules and accept the accounts payable effective, I'm sorry, for the 27th of February. So moved. Moved by Trustee Brewer? No, that was Todd. I'm sorry. Moved by Trustee Todd and second by Trustee um, Grant. Any questions? Can you refresh our memory and tell us uh, how much it was for? Because I don't seem to have a copy. Okay, I was going to bring that up at the, when, we, when we actually vote for it, because I do have the amount right here. What? Talking about how much the, the account payable is? You talk about the one we vote on uh, no. from last week, yeah. The, the one we voted on, wanted to vote on last week, but you said it was a typo. So how much? No, I said the this on this agenda that it's under um, new business the motion for accounts payable. The typo was two twenty. Oh, 
I, I it think, was really for 220. I think that, uh, Trustee, uh, just referencing last week when we took the uh, consensus to uh, for the accounts payable for uh, the amount. How much was it? Oh, for the left? Okay, well, I can do that after we still got a motion on the floor. So, well, wait a minute. We're, see, I'm confused. Uh, the, um, the thing we've been, the, the house payable we've been vote on is this one, April 20th. I didn't ask for a motion to vote on the okay. house payable. I asked for a motion to suspend the rules <laughs> to incorporate or to add, because it was a typo on the um, agenda, and it had, the typo was to, um, Approve the minutes for 220, and it should have been 227. Okay. That's that's what I have on the floor to suspend the rules and ask for a motion to make that to do that. And that was the, what the question was. <coughs> Any other questions, <coughs> Madam Clerk? Play call the roll. Trustee Grant. Yes. Trustee Jones. Trustee Tate. Yes. Trustee Ty. Yes. Trustee Zuma. Yes. Yes. Okay, that motion is carried. Now, you're asking how much the 200, I'm sorry, February the 20th account payable is? Yeah, that's the one that's in question, right? So, no. so the, the one, well, I think she's talking about the one from last week, the one that was $94,000. Yeah. How much is it? $94,524.06. The one from last week. That, that we asked for the consensus. That we asked for the consensus yes. for yes. Yes. So that's going to be that, added on to this one. No. no. That, that, okay, that's that, separate? That was the consensus to, so we could go ahead and pay that. Okay, so we had enough money to pay the 94000 Yes, we did. Okay. Yes, we did. Mayor? Yes. You did mention last week, though, when you asked for the consensus, you did say that we would formally vote on it tonight. Yes. So as long as we've got the motion to suspend the rules, I would ask that we consider making a motion to approve the accounts payable where the consensus was approved last week in the amount of $94,524.06. Okay. So can uh, we have a copy if you want to vote on it? You, can I get a copy you, from you, Grant? You, oh. the trustee yes, Grant? I mean, it's the same thing we had last yeah, Tuesday. I, I know I don't have a copy here, oh, but I, I was wondering, can I get a copy? You, you know, okay. yeah. I could, I could print a copy for you if you want. Mm -hmm. You want it now? Oh, no, I'll take his word for it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, then we'll vote on it. That has to be added to the amount that we're voting on now. Well, I'll put it this way. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll accept the motion to um, ratify the consensus vote for last week for the accounts payable in the amount of $94,524.06. So moved. Second. It was moved by Trustee um, Zupine, second by Trustee Todd. Any questions? Madam Clerk. Trustee Jones, Trustee Tate. Yes. Trustee Todd. Yes. Trustee Zupan. Yes. Trustee Brewer. Yes. Trustee Grant. Yes. That motion is carried. Okay, now I will accept the motion to approve the accounts payable dated. February 27, 2018, in the amount of $355,618.50. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Zupan and second by Trustee Grant. Any questions? I have questions. Mr. Mayor, last week uh, Mohan was out a couple of days, so I couldn't get these answers. Uh, first of all, well, a couple of questions first. Uh, we have Dr. Stroud on here again for union contracts, which she should, I mean, I'm sorry, professional services for SVP, uh, the, is that union contracts? Is that for union negotiations too? The, it's on page, I'm sorry, page one. 
Yes, that's for that particular that particular entity is dated one twenty eight. Yes. Okay, and also down here has Leslie Wisdom incident. Uh, can for four year? Can you tell me what's that about? Do you know? It's on the same line. Leslie Wisdom incident. C Cedar review for you. No, I don't know okay. what that one is. Okay, and then up above that it has. Uh, uh, I guess this is Lapka Pisco Dibbler. We're paying them for uh, negotiations too. Uh, so we paid Dr. Strader, so now we're paying the attorneys too, right? The attorney is the review. What Dr. Strader has already done, right? No, the attorney is the review, the legal the legality, the negotiation, the legality, <laughs> two different things. Mm -hmm. So you have to. Um, to basically, as you go forth, you have to put the paperwork together. You have to get all the um, ne negotiating part out of each and every um, area when you start negotiations. That's what Dr. Strada is doing, as I stated before. And then once you do that, you got to run it through the uh, lawyers to okay. make sure that it's uh, correct. Phase three, uh, we're paying the lawyers again nine thousand dollars for police negotiations. Yes. That's, that's, their, that's their part when they started, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That comes out of the police department, yes. Okay, more. On the last page, uh, you had Kane McKinney, and we paid them, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, four various amounts on research and all that sort of stuff. Is there any way I can get copies of those bills? to find out who uh, ordered these particular whatever questions, whatever the research they were doing for us. Because uh, there was a big deal about what I called, but I'd like to know who initiated these bills where we were paying them um, uh, a little over $8,000 for Kane McKinney. So we got economic development on here, professional services research analysts, and I like to know who uh, made those bills. Okay. Okay. Did you have a chance to talk to Mohan this like week? Like I said, Mohan's been out a lot this week, so I had. He wasn't out at all this week. He was out last week. Okay. Well, I couldn't catch him whenever he. He came. was here every day okay. this week, today and yesterday. Yeah. I couldn't okay. catch up with him. Okay. Any other questions? I just have a quick question. Sure. Actually, I actually have two. Um, on page one, with Olson and Stirk, they have a correspondence for a dress code policy. Yes. Is that what we have our HR person for? Or did they correspond with the attorney to make sure that it's correct? Okay, the dress code policy was something I ran through. I implemented the dress code policy and I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be going back and forth with the union. So I just wanted to make sure that what I, in the language I put it in was the under professional services with his Dillner and o, um, O'Donnell. It says ordinance resolution scavenger, scavenger license. Now I've not seen anything come before the ordinance review committee. So I did ask Mohan, but he, I, I don't know that he was sure of what that was. It'd be at the very bottom. I got to see it now. Yeah, ordinance um, resolutions. I have to. I don't know if that was something that Sherry was working with them about to find out if we could change it, but um, I think that's what it was because we had, we, we were going to change it and um, because right now it's only permitted for two licenses and we're going to open it up to more, so they wanted to make sure that the language that was presented is correct. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can I ask you one more question since uh, Trustee Todd brought it up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, dress code policy. What you know? <coughs> what, what were you asking for? What are you asking for in the dress code policy? Basically, to dress professionally and businesslike when you're at the front desk. I'm so not going to go into any further issue. than that because that's a personnel issue. But mm. when you represent the village, you should represent the village professionally, not just as if you just came from the you know wherever. So if you're at front talking to, to residents, you should present yourself as a, which you are, a advocate for the village, which you're working for the village. And that's, I implemented a dress code that was never implemented. Okay. And 
and then also, um, did you notice that on this on page one, it also has something on here for economic development for Kane McKinney, and we also paid them three hundred dollars for that too. So I'm, I'm just wondering who's running up all these bills for Kane McKinney, and I can't get a an simple answer about t tips. What do you mean who's running up all these bills? I, I mean I bills are happen. I'm sorry, trustee, but bills happen. But there's nobody just purposely running the bills. And it's I'm trying to make sure when, when you go to your professionals, which is your lawyers, it's because you want to make sure that you, first of all, that you're doing it correctly. Even though we may feel we are, when I'm not a lawyer and I'm a professor to be one, so I've asked the lawyers for certain things to make sure that it's done right so it doesn't come back later. So that's the reason why. I go to the lawyers. Now, if someone else goes to the lawyers, quite naturally, I'll, have, I'll go supposedly know about it, but sometimes I don't know about it. So well, I'm talking about Kane McKenna. I, Kane McKenna is our uh, people for our uh, TIF for um, money. In other words, for they, they're one of our uh, people that we, we consult in with our TIF. This particular incident, I'm pretty sure, was something I'm not sure. I cannot truthfully tell you what it was for, but anything that's on here, I'm sure that it was done for a, 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 a reason. I can't tell you that one, but tomorrow, um, Mohan will be here, and you know, I don't know when you got this economic, I'm sorry, when you got this accounts payable, but um, he's been here every day this week, so. Well, my question is, uh, when I called to say back in July when we first started, uh, it was a came and Kenny calls, uh, charged us like 1200 bucks because I asked questions. And then I'm noticing on this particular accounts payable, all these uh, um, charges came to Kenny and I just like to know who's, um, who they're, you know, why are they charging us all this money? You got 300 here, they got so many on the other pages, you know, and then I'm, um, I'm just wondering, uh, how come these bills weren't brought out and shown to the other trustees? But, you know, I'll, I'll get copies, no problem. The bills are the oh, bills. Oh. I mean, Mohan has the bills. We, we have the bills. I'm not going to pay something I have a bill for. Mm -hmm. But I can't sit here and recite to you every single thing that's on this accounts payable and tell you exactly what every single thing is. I'm uh, here a lot, but I'm not here that much to know. But there are copies of the bills. We have the copies of the bills. I know Mohan does. So if you want to come in and um, ask about that, it's no problem. I, I will. I but will. Um, as uh, also, you know, we, we, hopefully you don't take all day with that one person for that for those areas because there's other things that they have to do too. But I'm sure that's not a problem. That one particular bill is, you know, not a problem. Never taken all day, but okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? is out to approve the ordinance amending the fee schedule. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the next order is a motion to approve the request for approval of the village-owned land to go forth with that with these PIN numbers 32-25-302-026-000 and also PIN number 32-25-302-027. Dash zero 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 zero. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Zupai, second by Trustee Grant. Any questions? I have questions. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I talked to uh, the economic, economic director and uh, I'd just like to share some information he gave us about these two particular parcels, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, these two particular uh, parcels that we want to sell there may have been, and I'm saying may have been, environmental issue with the uh, laundromat and the um, 
Bowling Alley used to be. So when we sell the sell the land as is, that the buyer is taking the land as is, and we're not responsible for any liability related to environmental issues. Am I not right? Is, is that that's the um, the <laughs> consent or mm -hmm. the that's the legality that they will have this buyer as is, <coughs> and it's not the bowling alley. Bowling alley has been down for years. It's the laundromat and cleaners. The bowling alley land we're not selling. Well, I, I do. I say laundromat. No, I you say bowling. bowling. Well, I meant the laundromat and oh. the cleaners. Okay, and uh, it's my understanding that we sell this land even though it's in tip four. That once we sell this land, land, that um, if we get a, a buyer or a proposal for that particular land, that we uh, it'll be back in tip four, and we can use tip money to help them redevelop the land. Is that now what you told me? Are you, explain yeah, that? are you asking that question? No. Yeah, I'm trying to get Joe to explain that you, to me again. Okay. Well, that's what I'm asking you. Is that the question that you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, he, he knows. He no, I'm just, just reason, talking about the that. reason I'm asking is, are you, are you going to go back and forth or once you get that answer, is there another question that you have? Probably, but, you know, just the one I've got right now. Go ahead, Mr. Wizard. Uh, okay. The, uh, the requirement for proposals is basically for the sale of the land. Uh, as you described, um, I would uh, just, if for the record, the first PIN number, there should be an extra zero at the end. That's probably my fault, Madam Clerk. Uh, but just as a matter of the record, if you want to add that zero at the end. But in answer to Trustee Brewer's question, um, you know, the, the property is in a TIF district. Um, it won't change whether it changes ownership from the village to another entity. Um, however, the property would go back on the tax rolls. Um, the village board could consider a number of, of you know, different options um, in terms of the redevelopment of that property. But what we decided to do, in, instead of just selling the property and letting it, let someone buy it, and then just let it sit there for the next five or 10 years, is in the request for proposals, there is a plan proposal for redevelopment of that property. So whoever would buy it would present uh, the village with a plan to redevelop that property. And as part of that redevelopment uh, expense, they can uh, request, doesn't mean that they get it, um, it doesn't mean that there's any funds available for it, but they can request uh, assistance uh, through TIF number four. Um, in addition to that, there are other tax incentives, including, including the uh, class eight since the property has been vacant for more than two years. Okay. And the only other thing that I want to know is that uh, if we get a buyer for that particular land, can we somehow make it clear that if the buyer discovers an environmental issue later on down the line, I know you're saying as is, but to make it clear in a contract somewhere that Salt Village won't be responsible for any environmental issues because you know a lot of times like buying chloride was in our water and it show up for 25 years if this guy if the buyer comes along maybe five ten years old and the environmental issue comes up there and come back and sue us i want to know is there some kind of safeguard we could put in the contract that says that this is actually as it is even though you say you tell them that well we don't know that but you know how things go i'd like to be made clear that South Village is not going to be responsible for any soil contamination because of the cleaners was there. And I do believe I had somewhere, some paper somewhere that said that they had an environmental issue related to that cleaners. But I want to make sure South Village is covered, you know, from this environment, potential, um, you know, liability. You, you see what I mean? Yeah, and, okay. and I'd like to speak to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, first of all, that, that there's never been any village has on record that there are any other environmental issues. That being said, um, with respect to your question, the, uh, the village, by all means, can, can put a, an addendum to the sales agreement that states that you know, the buyer is buying the property as is and does not uh, 
accept or will not accept any responsibility for any uh, claims, either past, present, or future. There you go. That's it. Past, present, future. Can you put that in the that, proposal? That, that yeah. can most definitely be in the Thank agreement you. itself. Mm -hmm. But it won't go in the request for the proposal, but <laughs> in, in the contract, that can that, 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 be added to. Okay, past. great. Thank you. Any other questions? No. <coughs> Madam Clerk, you please call the roll. Trustee Zupan? Yes. Trustee Brewer? Yes. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Jones? Trustee Tate? Yes. Trustee Todd? Yes. Motion is carried. <laughs> Also, we have a motion to approve the ordinance amending the uh, fee schedule. You have it in front of you. We talked about it. It's been um, put before the uh, ordinance review committee. I'll accept the motion to uh, approve that ordinance. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee uh, Ty, second by Trustee Zupan. Any questions? Madam Clerk, you please call the roll. Yes. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Jones? Trustee Tate? Yes. Trustee Todd? Yes. Trustee Zupan? Yes. Motion is carried. I have a motion before you to approve the um, contract or approve the going with the first communications to be our phone service for the Village of Salt Village. And their monthly payment will be eighteen hundred and seven dollars and twenty cents. So moved. Second. It was moved by Trustee Zupa, second by Trustee Grant. Any questions? Madam Clerk. Trustee Grant. Yes. Trustee Jones. Trustee Tate. Yes. Trustee Todd. No. Trustee Zupa. Yes. Trustee Brewer. No. Motion is carried. E and F are not uh, part of that because it's, it, we, we have voted on the other one. Any uh, general comments from the Board of Trustees? I'll, try, I'll start with Trustee Ty. No comment at this time. Trustee Brewer? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, D, E, and F, uh, we talked the voiceovers. I don't think, uh, well, this is my opinion that the First Communications did not come and give a presentation, if I'm not mistaken. STC was here, and they gave a very good uh, presentation. And uh, the third one, uh, they were here. So they, they, weren't, they weren't here. So um, by us just voting on the uh, First Communications, I don't think we gave uh, E and F a really fair chance of you know, being accepted or whatever, because I mean, uh, STC, STC was here. They gave their presentation, you know, and they had a very good presentation. So, and they they had this stuff all lined up and everything. Uh, Nativity wasn't here, so I don't know why all three will, you know. You, do you understand what I mean? We should I'm have a chance to, to. I'm going to try to explain. To, to you, uh, select. You do okay. Mm -hmm. Why would I go any further if it was voted on the first one? If the first one wasn't voted on and was voted down, then yes, I would go to the next one. But why entertain the next one? Because you already, well, the first one was already accepted. So why would I go to the next one if the first one that was read out and it was done in, in order of um, the lowest bid to the highest one? So if it was voted on the first one, and they voted that one, why would I go to the next two? So you want the people that said yes to say I no on that one? I didn't one? say uh, you should go to the next one. I said they weren't, I don't think they were given the fair chance like the first one. They Even came, though the bid they was came there, out? I'm just, no, I'm just, that's my opinion. Okay. Okay. Would you, I thought it was a question. It was just no, I didn't say question. Okay. I said that was my opinion. Yeah. Trustee Tate? Trustee? Um, Zupa? Yeah, sorry, I have um, a couple questions for the clerk. And I'm, I'm trying to think back to when we talked about Student Government Day. I know you had mentioned that during the report earlier tonight. And for the life of me, I don't remember us 
saying that this was something we were going to proceed with. So maybe you had an offline conversation. That's entirely possible. I don't know. Um, so I was just curious to know it, if anything has been planned yet or if it's still too early for that. And then uh, also with regards to the village stickers, uh, that was the first I was hearing of that as well. So I'm just going to guess to say that you had an offline conversation with that as well um, to get that moving. Are we offering prizes by chance for the village sticker concert or contest? Yeah. For the village sticker, I was going to give out of pocket a $25 gift certificate. Um, in terms of the village sticker, uh, it was my understanding that it was just a process that normally would take place by the village clerk and that it really did not require approval or anything. However, I did communicate with the front office as well as with the mayor in terms of the number of stickers that should be ordered. Because as I looked at the number of stickers that we ordered for the vehicles, for animal tags and a couple of other items that we have been known to just place the order year after year, we usually end up with an overage. So we will be ordering a smaller number. In terms of student governance day, we definitely spoke of it and uh, I will present those minutes to you. I'll put them in your box. And basically, we, you all asked for a date and more specifics, uh, more so than anything you were concerned about the transportation. And so that's why the transportation was a priority in being handled. OK, um, if I may, Mayor, just follow up on that. Um, I'll contribute toward the prize for the stickers to make it a little bit more lucrative so that if we do this in the future, maybe we get a little bit more participation going forward. So uh, I'll see you offline about that. Thank you. Trustee Gray? Uh, nothing at this time. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, reiterate um, a couple of things. First of all, I'd like to thank all the trustees. And I see my um, department heads have left, but I did thank them um, yesterday about the coming out to WinPAC and uh, being, being there uh, to see. And those that had not had a chance, the trustees that didn't have a chance to come out and see that facility, um, they're worldwide. And um, they built that second building and they, they already put in three lines. Each line I found out cost $10 million to actually put in, but they make $30 million out of that. So, and that's every year. So Sweden and all over to, uh, to, to come here. Uh, I've never been in a room with so many different, I call them millionaires because they're all on the board. And then a couple of billionaires that were there, but I'm just glad they came out to Salt Village and, and they're doing business with us. And they look, and what they're looking to do is fill up that second, uh, parcel, which is about 400,000 square feet. And hopefully if they do that, then they still have room to build another one. So that's something that um, I'm hoping that um, that they will do it. And you can tell they, they're really committed to Salt Village. They've invested in Salt Village. They came from right next door, South Chicago Heights, but there was nowhere for them to construct another building. So that's why they came over to Salt Village first. And then they got enough land to put the second building, so hopefully they'll, they'll and they will, and there's still enough land to put a third one. So I just wanted to say thanks for everyone that came out and, uh, and, and, and saw it, and I thought it was very impressive myself. Um, yesterday I met with the um, pastors of the churches in Salt Village. Um, we're going to be um, bringing some things to the village. Um, they're going to actually help us participate in a lot of areas that we, as far as needing volunteers for, for cleanup day and other aspects. And um, I just asked them to read on the, to meet on a regular basis 
Uh, I'll just be a fly on the wall. I just want them to kind of come together and it's all for the betterment of the residents here in Salt Village. And as we know, the churches are an integral part in any uh, municipality. So I just wanted to say I had six pastors to show up and two to call in. So this is going to be an ongoing. They seem interested and I appreciate that. With that being said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved by Trustee Brewer and second by Trustee Grant. All in favor? Aye. Opposes? Motion carried. Thank you very much.